We're back at the Anaheim Convention Center for DesignerCon 2021! You guys know me, I'm an artsy kind of guy. I got the mustache right now to prove it. Which is why I love DesignerCon. They've got art, toys, collectibles, apparel, and other. Still recovering from the wrist surgery, so I can't cover this as thoroughly or as in-depth as I normally would, but I thought, that's still no reason we can't go inside and check out this scene. Dude, look at this. We're not even inside the convention hall yet. And there's already all kinds of rad stuff. Ooh. Ah. Wait a minute. Nipsey? Awesome. All right. Here we go in for real. Dude, it's only now that I realize just how long it's been since I've been in the Anaheim Convention Center. And I'm already blown away by the stuff I'm seeing. Dude, no way. Look at this. Three seconds in the door and already somebody's got screen used Gumby right here. Look at that. It's Gumby. Holy cow. Dude, Prickle and Goo and the Blockheads, Pokey. Dude, they're selling a screen used Gumby for only 10K. Chump change. Too bad I don't got any. Oh, dude, remember all these little figures here? They're coming back in a big way. Ooh, Kenner superpowers. Look at that, mint in the pack. Commanding much higher prices than they used to, dude. I love vintage toys, and I love that they've got some in here. Ooh, Secret Wars. A lot of modern toys. Look at this. Never seen Dark Crystal models before. That is awesome. But not as awesome as the old school bootlegs over here, including a ton of Galaxy Heroes. These are quite hard to find. As a matter of fact, all over DesignerCon, you're gonna see modern and vintage bootleg toys. Some high quality, some low quality, some low quality on purpose. There's a lot of high-end uh, designer stuff, as you would expect from something called DesignerCon. I think the king thing of all the things out here are the vinyl figures. All kinds of collectible vinyl figures, some one of a kind, some 1,000 of a kind, some 10,000 of a kind. It ain't just Funko Pops anymore, baby. There is all kinds of weirdness these days. Check it out here, Soap Bar Hero. Look at that guy. Wow, it makes you realize just how expensive it is to make things like this when they're not mass produced when you see these prices. But remember, these aren't just toys that are expensive. These are designer collectible items. Ooh, collectible. Look at this, there's all kinds of anime art, stickers, there are coloring books, there are jewelry and apparel. It's a lot to see and take in, especially when you get to the individual makers booths. If you really want to see everything, honestly, you really need like the full three day pass. This year, unfortunately, we only had time for one day at designer cons. So we're in a little bit of a rush. Especially because this year I've got some friends who are exhibiting all their stuff out here at designer con. So we're gonna try to find them first, I think. It's just that that's a little easier said than done. There's a lot stuff out here very visually overstimulating oh I remember these guys I almost bought a skateboard from them last time and I don't even know when the last time I rode a skateboard was but look at all the rad stuff they've got Yu-Gi-Oh the freaking labyrinth fraggle rock that's the thing it's dangerous to come to designer con because not only do they have all these amazing things that you will never get a chance to see or buy again likely but then you see all the cool officially licensed merchandise as well oh yeah I'm gonna have to give my wallet to somebody for safekeeping here there's just too much cool stuff like for example my friend Chris's stuff from Route 9 Nine signs. Dude, look at these. Chris creates miniature versions of old school neon signs. Each one of these is handcrafted by this guy right here. Look at this guy. All right, what's going on with this, Chris? Okay, so the, the sphere itself is a 3D print. Right. It's painted white, and I modeled all of the holes for the bulbs. The bulbs themselves are actually sewing pins, glass sewing pins. Dang it. There's about 160 of them on here. Just on the little top spire here, 160 and little individually 
glued on pieces. This is laser cut acrylic. The main body is wood. Right. Uh, it's painted. This little guy, the face is acrylic. The neon here is laser cut acrylic. Um, the beer keg under here, that's a 3D printed beer keg. This is my best work ever. Right. Moon Motel is my favorite sign. It's on Route 9 in New Jersey. Okay. So um, this has some 3D printing, laser cut wood, laser cut acrylic, and painting, and a lot of a lot of weathering. How long does each one of these take to make? Just ballpark. I've been for the last month. I've been working on these two signs, about four or five hours a day. So Jeez. That, I Dude, can't tell Chris what... has made a bunch of these now. This is awesome. If you want to see more of his work, just go to his Instagram right there. See it? Do it! See, this stuff is awesome. Chris is based up in Fresno, as are his hosts, Monster City Studios, who make all kinds of properties. Monkeys right here, they're going to auction those off for Magic Wheelchair, which is a very worthy charity that I also donate to from time to time. Check out Magic Wheelchair! Anyway, it's nice to see friends, and it's also nice to just see tons of stuff I can't even explain. What in the world am I looking at? That and the mix of weird vintage stuff back there? That is why I love Designer Con so, so very much. Still hard for me to film with this busted wing of mine. And honestly, it's not just my wrist recovery. Allie and I have both been having a very hard time, especially because she's got some crazy medical related news lately. And her surgery is coming up. It's just been heavy. So it's nice to come out here and get very, very distracted. Look at all of this stuff. It's sort of a weird thing going on because you're supposed, everyone's supposed to wear a mask. There's signs that say that, but then they gave you these little wristbands if you've been vaccinated like us, and then most people aren't wearing their masks, but some are. It's kind of a weird policy. I just want to know what the rules are. <laughs> Look at me. That's what I'm talking about. Anyway, since my wrist is still pretty damaged and it is hard for me to hold the camera like normal, I'm gonna do stuff a little differently today. So here's a montage of some of the awesome stuff we saw at Designer Con today. shelf. But what you really need is Snoop on the stoop.
just a long, long montage, and I'm only showing you the tip of the iceberg. Isn't that right, Bigfoot? Oh, it's a little cranky today. Doesn't like being out of the forest for too long. I don't know what this is over here. They are doing a brisk business, man. They're like selling out of this crazy stuff. I don't know why, but I really like that. I keep looking out for monster stuff because I've started to collect old monster toys. Like vintage, like from the 70s and the 60s and like old monster stuff. I'm always collecting something, so I'm gonna let go of a lot of stuff I've been collecting. We're gonna put some on the online store, store.randomland.com, where, where our sick merch is. And we're gonna put some in the antique store booth while we still have that. So we're gonna keep that through Christmas. We're gonna throw a bunch of stuff in there uh, towards Christmas, December 1st, that time period. And then I don't know how long we're gonna have it, so keep an eye out. And uh, we might still have it, but it might move, or we might completely switch up the theme. I don't know. We'll talk about that next While time. While we're still here, I gotta focus my attention on all this weird stuff, dude. Some of this stuff is pretty epic. I feel, I'm feeling inspired, guys. Oh my gosh! Look who it is. It's been too long. It's been too long. Like a lot of conventions, they also have like uh, panels and discussions and things that I never have the patience to sit there and watch, but you might like it. Check out the program. Dude, and look who's running. Look who's running some of these panels. It's my friend Mark Bricky. What's up, Mark Bricky? Oh, my lens cap is on. Oh, what the heck? I turned my back for a second. They got a Mega Man out here, too. Creepy. All right, we've almost walked through it all, and then we'll walk through it again without a camera so I can look twice as hard. It's cool seeing movie vehicles of any kind. Looks like this year they've got a Jurassic Park Jeep, got a little modern Ghostbusters going on, and just like two years ago, it looks like they brought back my good friend Marco, the original Pizza Planet truck creator or IRL creator. There it is, Pizza Planet truck. Look at that. It's just weird because normally Marco, the owner of Planet truck, the official original. It's usually very close to it, and I can see his phone charging in there. Makes me really want to write in the dust on the hood, but I know he he very carefully curates his layers of film accurate levels of Planet truck dust. So, where's Marco? Oh, I know how to find him. Marco! No polo. I'll keep trying. <laughs> So much epic, custom, holographic, creative, amazing, colorful stuff here. And I wish I had time to show you much, much, much more. Because there's so much stuff worth seeing over here, especially in the sort of small creator area in the back. But I think we are officially out of time. Thank you guys for watching and hanging out, particularly while my wrist recovers. I know I didn't have time to build the footage to scale or to paint it. Different camera, different quality level, sort of loosey-goosey and strange right now as this hopefully gets better, but uh, we're doing the best we can. So I think it's safe to say for now, We've done our duty. It's time to go home and sleep well.